We are here today to mark up three important bills that I believe implement common sense approaches to improving processes that form the foundation of our layered approach to security. Uh, in the Judiciary Committee, we were marking up the Patriot Act, and it is uh, interesting uh, that our work overlaps and uh, that we are focused today uh, on the security of this nation. I know the Chairman was recently uh, in the reauthorization of the uh, defense authorization, and I know that uh, work continues. Last week, this subcommittee held a legislative hearing to discuss the Martin Security Credentials Act uh, that you, Mr. Chairman, have introduced. I commend you for holding a legislative hearing on the bill. I know you share my commitment to ensuring that nothing we do here adversely impacts employment opportunities for workers or raises credentialing uh, costs for industry. At the hearing, you pledged last week to work with me and my colleagues on this side of the aisle to address our concerns, and that is exactly what happened. The amendment that you are offering today represents true collaboration and in the spirit of, again, securing the homeland. Together, we have developed legislation that will promote efficiency in vetting and, in turn, help workers and their employers realize the benefits of these efficiencies. I am particularly pleased that Chairman Rogers' amendment authorized an industry task force to produce recommendations for TSA and Congress on how to proceed with further security credentialing harmonization efforts. I believe there is a way to harmonize and streamline the security threat assessment process. However, since this process involves Federal and private sector stakeholders, I feel that their input is essential in crafting policies that will protect workers, reduce costs, and improve security. I would hope also, Mr. Chairman, that the individuals who represent workers will also have the ability to participate and give input into this task force. I think we can agree that these are our common goals, and I think the language we have before us today establishes a process for developing good policies and programs in this area. Additionally, I am pleased that the amendment strikes language on disqualifying offenses that could potentially have unintended negative consequences for transportation workers and instead uh, charges a task force with responsibility to look at the issue. There is, however, one area of unfinished business from the legislative hearing, competition in the data channeling marketplace. I strongly believe that this is an area for full and open competition. Uh, further, I have serious misgivings about Texas TSA's plans to sole source enrollment services to one firm. Any businessman or woman will tell you that competition spurs innovation, improves the quality of services, and brings down costs. As H.R. 1690 moves forward, I hope to work with you to seize the opportunity to put TSA on a path to competition. Mr. Chairman, I would also like to thank you for considering my TSA Ombudsman Act, H.R. 1165, which codifies the Office of the Ombudsman and establishes a direct report between the Ombudsman and the TSA Administrator. I believe this was recommended in the 9-11 report. TSA employees are on the front lines of our nation's fight to protect the homeland, yet since TSA's inception, high attrition and low morale have plagued the agency, particularly among the approximately 46,000 transportation security officers responsible for screening 2 million air passengers each day. As I travel through airports, I make it my uh, business to thank the TSO officers uh, for um, their uh, assistance. Part of the reason for the low morale among the TSA workforce is a lack of uh, a mechanism to address problematic workplace issues. And so as I thank them for their service to the nation, this is a gift to them as well. H.R. 1165 incorporates recommendations by the Inspector General to strengthen this office and is based upon months of oversight by this committee. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I would like to express my support for Mr. Kravik's bill, H.R. 1801, which establishes a plan for expediting screening of military personnel at airport security checkpoints. Way and long overdue, thank you uh, for showing uh, our men and women of the United States military that we don't speak words of appreciation, we actually act. I supported this language as an amendment to the Transportation Security Administration Authorization Act passed in last Congress, and I support it today. This legislation properly recognizes the preciousness of time to the patriotic military men and women in our military, and I would ask at this time unanimous consent to allow me to um, uh, act as a co-sponsor of Mr. Kravik's bill uh, at this time. Without objection. Uh, finally, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> uh, just a few words. Let me also say that this past weekend we had several, in fact it was over the last four days, we had several incidents with suspicious activity on aircraft. I'm concerned that in the wake of bin Laden raid there may be more terrorist activity that individuals may think of or just actions that occur. 
Let us thank the valiant men and women who stopped the activity. Some were impacted by mental illness, but we know there is a great concern. Now more than ever, we need to be vigilant. Earlier this year, I introduced H.R. 71, the Federal Air Marshal Augmentation Act, that would increase the number of FAMs on international inbound flights. I understand that there are some cost issues with the bill, but I would like to work with you, Mr. Chairman, on moving this legislation, crafting it in a way that we will reduce costs where we would instruct FAMs to use the immediate resources that they have to strategically try to impact on inbound flights and also domestic flights. I believe we can do that. I would like to see Congress direct FAMs to reassign resources to the highest threat flights, and I think we can do this without impacting the budget, but also on domestic flights. Uh, we can have a hearing, if you would like, or just uh, amend my bill as a substitute, as we've done today, but I think it would show the uh, continued relevance of this committee that really has been on the front line of protecting those who are uh, traveling uh, the nation's railroads, rail uh, systems, excuse me, and traveling the nation's airlines. The American people need to hear us say that we believe they should be protected uh, in addition to the brave passengers and as well the flight attendants who, as I understand, as the facts will show us, were the ones that actually thwarted a number of these individuals. So, Mr. Chairman, I extend my hand of friendship on this. I think it is important for this committee to make a stand uh, to uh, act on issues that are occurring as we speak, and I would like to work with you on that. Thank you, um, to, and I appreciate and that I yield back. I thank the ranking member.